The economy going strong is incredibly important, well beyond just giving us options for promotions and getting the moolah that makes survival possible. A healthy economy also means we have the opportunity to live dignified, worthwhile lives and the luxury time to work at being better people than we were yesterday. We can all agree that politicians yelling and screaming over who does what better doesn't prove who does it better. The well-being of Americans are not political cannon fodder. Instead, I wanted to hunt down the numbers, not knowing exactly what I'd find, focusing on the four topics I hear the most when it comes to presidential administrations. The research spans the last 43 years, piecing together data from the Bureau of Labor, Macro Trends, and other sources. I've got them all in the description below. So that's 43 years, seven presidents, four of them Republicans, three of them Democrats. And although this isn't perfect, I did try and strike a balance between minimizing the effect of individual circumstances, that's why I did 43 years, while keeping to presidents who more or less still represent the two major parties, which is again why I stuck to about 43 years instead of 200 and some odd. All right, this is the question I wanted to answer. Under which political party are these various economic factors better, typically? Let's dig in. When I talk to conservatives about jobs, I love their spirit about work. Work hard, work good, and be rewarded. Even if stuck in a job you don't like, be the best you can be at that job. I appreciate the person who does similarly over the person who loathes their job and lets everyone know about it. Over the past 43 years, you can see how jobs fare under each president. You can see Joe Biden as the number one spot and Donald Trump at the bottom. Bill Clinton scores pretty high and Ronald Reagan takes a top spot as well. But there's a clear divide here. When you look by party, Democrats on average per year create 2.4 million jobs, while Republicans only on average create 741,000 jobs per year. Even zooming into the years just before the pandemic with Trump, or any of the best years in the Republican areas, the only person who comes close to the regular increases Democrats create is Ronald Reagan. There's simply no competition here, but jobs are only one factor. Inflation is great at birthday parties, but sucks for your bank account. It's all well and good to have a job, but if inflation is too high, it'll feel like you are going backwards, and that doesn't feel good. Beyond hurting your feelings, though, it makes it harder for you and your family to survive. So how do the last seven presidents stack up for inflation? Obama comes in first, that to me was actually kind of startling, his presidency oversaw the lowest average inflation rates per year. Trump did next best, just wasn't able to save the jobs during those years, and you can see how the process continues with Bill Clinton next and Joe Biden last. When looking by party to see what effects different party policies may have, they're overall pretty damn close. Dems sneak in a small lead and Reagan takes the cake for worst inflation year in the past 43. We need companies to do well, to keep providing jobs, security, innovation, and more. But I don't mean that we should treat corporations as people with the same inalienable rights, but that's for a different video. During every presidency, people talk about the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index, which tracks the 30 most actively traded stocks, the S&P 500, which sees less conversation and includes the top 500 most valuable companies, giving it a bigger pool. But between these, people often assess a kind of health of the nation's economy. Here's how each president did over the past 43 years. Bill Clinton takes home the gold, followed by a distant Donald Trump close on his heels are H.W. Bush, Reagan, and Obama. Biden is close-ish after that, then a big distance till W. Bush. Corporate well-being just seems to actually do super well regardless of what's going on, with only a few exceptions to that rule. Unfortunately for the Republican Party, those exceptions tend to fall into their administrations, making average yearly growth for Dems basically double that of Republicans. The national debt is a big monster of a thing. It grows and grows, seemingly unabated every year. You can think of the national debt as the dream killer of future generations. This grows either from spending without increasing taxes or taxing less without adjusting spending. Of all the factors, this one is the clearest. The best for the national debt is and grew the least on average per year was Clinton and takes the bonus as the only president in the past 43 years to have a negative growth of the national debt, then Biden, which I can find super surprising because of the media blitz against him these days, and the three Democrats basically are there on top. Trump comes in just behind W. Bush, which I also find surprising because the way Democrats talk about Trump spending, I thought he was going to be straight up last. And then there's H. W. Bush with Reagan coming in worst by party. It doesn't get better for Republicans. Democrats come in with a debt increase on average per year at 6.3%, while Republicans scarily hit 10.9%. With all the information out there meant to hide the truth about our economic situation in the United States, it can be hard to figure out who to vote for and when. This review is far from all-inclusive view of the political parties and their records. One thing, though, has become clear from doing this research. 
If you care about job creation, kicking inflation's rear, corporate economic health, and the national debt, you can vote with the trends of history that show which administrations tend to lead to the best economies, or you can vote against it, hoping against hope that the t this time around, history doesn't repeat itself. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.